welcome back to the channel this is trendy storm and you are watching 10th part of what if naruto became wielder of universal weapon if you enjoy this video please like share and subscribe to the channel no wasting no more time let's start the story the rebels were currently engaging the loyalists in an all-out battle with ninja tools and jutsus flying everywhere in order to gain dominance over the other with neither side gaining an advantage suddenly Something caught their attention, and they looked up, shocked to see someone dressed in Anbu gear riding an energy construct of a panther straight at them. Naruto jumped off the panther as it lunged for the loyalists, doved towards them with a cipher blade emitting a red aura, landed in the middle of a group and performed a 360 spinning slash to bisect them, with only a few barely able to jump out of his range, and that alone was enough to tell anyone whose side he's on. One of the loyalists brandished a kanai and charged at Naruto, intending to stab him, but Blonde used a diagonal slash to slice cleanly through the ninja tool and cut open his chest, leaving him to collapse to the ground in a pool of blood. Several more enemies charged at Naruto, launching a hail of kanai and shuriken at him. Naruto aimed the gauntlet at the sky and exclaimed, Reflect Plasma Catapult. He launched himself high into the sky, allowing the incoming projectiles to deflect each other. He then summoned the Scarlet Plasma Eagle construct to swoop down and pierce through a portion of the targeted group, while flinging a handful of kanai to take out the remainder. Naruto turned around to see some of the enemies weaving through sets of hand signs and prepared for their incoming jutsus with the cipher blade or quick options to use. Water Bullet Water Style The first shot was a large rotating orb of water. Water wave palm. Says the designer. Next, he extended his palm to release a powerful jet of water. Water dragon bullet. Water style. Along with the others, the third launched a massive water attack in the form of a serpentine dragon. Naruto dashed towards the jutsus and summoned option B to ride on, swung the cipher blade rapidly to instantly freeze the water orb then shatter it to pieces, the panther leapt into the air to evade the second water jutsu with the water dragon lunging towards him, ultra-cold boomerang throw. Naruto threw the cipher blade through the dragon, instantly freezing it and causing the panther to run towards the enemies. He leapt towards them while catching the cipher blade in midair, causing it to emit a yellow aura. Eruptive Cipher Charged Strike he struck the enemies with a 180-degree slash and dashed backwards as their bodies emitted yellow auras. What did you got? Exclaimed one of the loyalists as the aura overpowered them and they exploded without warning. So far, so good. We've been putting pressure on the mist ninjas from the start and just need to keep going like this, Naruto said as the cipher blade vanished back into the bracelet. How are the other people doing, Chinami-san? Their vitals are fine, Naruto-sama, Chinami replied. That's good to know. Naruto turned to see more loyalists appear on the battlefield. Better do my best over here too and make my way towards Yagura. The devil may cry. With the dual handguns Ebony and Ivory holstered beneath his cloak, he activated the bracelet to summon rebellion. He dashed towards the enemies who were approaching him with vigilance and the intent to kill. Naruto deflected the incoming strikes with slight side-to-side -side movements, then dashed backwards before launching an attack. Hacker Naruto unleashed a four-hit combo, the last of which was powerful enough to knock one of his opponents away. Hearing a whistle in the air, Naruto turned around to block an overhead strike from behind and planted a kick in the torso to knock him back. High time. He yelled, before quickly rolling away when one of the loyalists flung a handful of kanai at him. He continued to roll along the ground before performing a single-handed handspring to flip into the air as he attached rebellion to his back, then drew the handguns from their holster and took aim with a smirk hidden by his mask. Ladies, it's time to play. He pulled the triggers to quickly fire at the confused enemies, with several being gunned down while others quickly took cover with the replacement jutsu. Naruto paused his shooting and cautiously examined his surroundings. He noticed faint traces of movement behind the trees and dashed towards them. 
The enemy ninjas ambushed him from behind the branches of trees as soon as he entered the forest. Rainstorm in reverse. Naruto leapt into the air and spun around while firing, unleashing a hail of bullets that knocked them all to the ground, Rainstorm. He then spiraled downwards to continue firing at his downed enemies to finish them off. Sigh so many blinded enemies. Naruto turned his attention to the sounds of battle ahead. And there's a lot more to come. Naruto-kun, I'm picking up on Isobu's chakra several kilometers away. Yugura must be positioned behind his army, Kurama explained. My best guess is that he's expecting the strongest to make for him, so I might as well give him what he wants, Naruto reasoned as he holstered the handguns and dashed off to engage more of the enemy. Zabuza was cutting down the opposition with his Kabikirabocho from left to right in another part of the battlefield. The loyalists were terrified when the Demon of the Mist appeared alongside the rebel forces, but they are now terrified by his relentless slaughter. He swung his sword at multiple enemies, dismembering them as they attempted to attack him in a pincer formation, only to fail miserably. Is this the best you guys can do? Either I've grown significantly stronger since leaving this hellhole, or you're seriously lacking in training under Yugura's rule. Said Zabuza, smirking behind his mask. Be quiet, traitor. You will be executed for attempting to assassinate Yugura-sama and supporting those filthy bloodliners. Exclaimed one of the loyalists. Better a traitor with a recovered conscience than a monster with no regard for life. It's about time I put an end to this damned war, Zabuza said. How are you supposed to do that? You're only postponing your death. Oh, I'll die naturally, Zabuza said as he strapped the Kabikirabocho to his back and quickly weaved through a series of hand signs. Water Dragon Bullet Water Style Water shot out of a nearby lake in the shape of a dragon, roaring loudly and lunging at its targets, blasting them away with massive water pressure, though the most experienced were able to avoid the powerful jutsu and retaliated with jutsus of their own. Water Jutsu Water Whip The shinobi lashed out with water constructs at Zabuza, who quickly used the flat side of his zanbatu as a shield to defend against before jumping back to create some distance, then unsealed a handful of shuriken to throw at them, only to be deflected with kanai. I think I've been taking it easy on you amateurs, time for me to get serious and show you just how I got my representative as the demon of the mist, with a little help from my son-in-law. It's not like he'll ever hear something so embarrassing from me, and you're going to die anyway," Zabuza said as he sealed away the Kabikirabocho before holding out the hand with the ring and calling out, Equip. The ring emitted a bright flash of light that temporarily blinded everyone present before fading to reveal Zabuza holding a large two-handed double-edged sword with a length similar to Kabikirabocho, its hilt wrapped in brown leather, the outer edge is silver metal, and the interior is covered in intricate markings depicting ghastly faces open-mouthed and screaming. If Zabuza wielding his Zanbatu wasn't frightening enough, the appearance of this sword and the aura it's currently emitting make it appear as if the swordsman is holding a tool forged by the Shinigami itself. Zabuza suddenly had visions of a red-hooded man with glowing white eyes battling beings both holy and demonic while riding atop a blackened horse with a fiery mane and swinging the blade. Well now. Looks like I have the fortune of wielding a blade owned by one who represents the very essence of what we're currently engaged in. He smiled as information flowed into his mind and he learned the name of the sword. Consider it an honor to have seen the Chaos Eater. Zabuza then charged forward, his sword dragging along the ground as he approached the enemy, who charged right back at him despite their inner fears. The demon swordsman swung the blade with half spins for radial attacks to strike the loyalists surrounding him discovered that Chaos Eater was absorbing some sort of energy from the enemy he slays and the aura would become stronger but for now he paid half a mind to it and continued to attack. When he heard rapid footsteps approaching, he quickly spun around to block an overheard strike from a loyalist wielding a katana. Zabuza then pushed back to initiate a triple hit, the fourth being a splitting strike that slammed the ground, causing a mini-quake and killing the enemy. Are you sure that's all you've got? 
Zabuza dashed up to a pair of mist ninjas and launched them into the air with him, then juggled them in midair with a barrage of slashes before finishing with a somersault strike. The Chaos Eater's aura grew larger as the energy from the fallen enemy was drained, and Zabuza had a gut feeling that it was about to do something but continued to attack anyway. He swung around to fling the corpse into an incoming mist ninja to knock him back, then dashed across the field with a lunging stab to pierce all the way to the back. To Zabuza's surprise, the Chaos Eater began to shake as the aura surged from the blade and engulfed him. The demon swordsman felt something stirring within him, something resembling rage towards the Mizukage and his men for their actions, and it was clawing to get out and attack them. Raw. Zabuza roared as a pillar of flames burst from within him into the sky for a few moments before receding to reveal a horrifying sight to everyone in the field. He has been replaced by a hulking fiery demon with vestigial wings on its back and a fire sword in its hand. The loyalists trembled in fear and their hearts skipped a beat as they saw the demon slowly turn its head towards them, and all hell broke loose when it roared and charged straight at them. Murder it. Kill it right now. Mizuke Sama must not get any closer. One of the Mist Ninja burst out laughing. The Mist Ninjas used their most powerful jutsus and threw kanai wrapped in explosive tags at the fiery demon, causing a chain reaction of explosions and steam before falling silent. Is. Is it dead? Shulrk. The Mist Ninja got his answer when a flaming sword shot out of the mist and slashed off his head before the demon stepped out, much to their surprise that it was still alive. The demon turned swordsman swung his flaming sword left and right in a frenzy, then grabbed one with its free hand and incinerated him before leaping into the air and stomping on the ground to unleash a radial burst of flames to burn his surrounding enemies. Retreat. Retreat right now. When one of the loyalists cried out in fear and ran away, the demon was about to pursue when it suddenly went down on one knee as the flames died and faded away, revealing Zabuza panting in exhaustion. What in the world happened to me? I felt like my body was on fire, but I wasn't getting burned. And there was this overwhelming feeling of strength, he said, looking at the Chaos Eater in his hand. You must have had something to do with this. Zabuza-san, are you okay? One of the rebel ninjas asked. I'm fine, just tired, Zabuza responded. I need a status report. Your assault has confused and terrified the enemy, so they're retreating to regroup with the others. I see. Then we continue to pursue them and keep the pressure on them, Zabuza said as he reached into his ninja pouch for a soldier pill to replenish his chakra. Sir, yes. Then Zabuza led his platoon in the direction where the loyalists had fled. Kakashi was fighting his own share of enemies in another part of the battlefield, his Sharingan eye exposed to gain an advantage. He simply parried a Kanai strike with his own before retaliating with a roundhouse, back flipping a few times to gain distance, and weaving through a set of hand signs. Fire style. Grand fireball jutsu. He expelled a massive ball of fire from his mouth towards the enemies, burning quite a few while allowing several others to evade the jutsu. He noticed a mist ninja making several hand signs out of the corner of his eye and began to mimic them before ending with the final hand sign. Water Shuriken Jutsu. Water Shuriken Jutsu. Water swirled around their open palms, forming the shape of spinning shuriken before throwing them only for the projectiles to collide in midair and burst into water droplets, much to their opponent's surprise. Hum, this could come in handy later. I'm sure Otouta would enjoy learning it. Well back into the fight, he took off in a blur to appear right in front of the Mist Ninja, then used an uppercut to launch him into the air before jumping in pursuit and knocking him down with a heel drop kick. Suddenly, a ring of mist ninjas appeared around him, armed with kanai and katanas, ready to overwhelm him with numbers. Kakashi simply shook his head in dismay. While numbers are a good strategy, it's unfortunate that I know a certain jutsu to counter it. Ninpo. Art of the Inazuma. 
he took a stance as a blue rune with Siddha characters surrounded him in blue electricity radiated from his body, Ninpo, art of the Inazuma. He went through a series of postures before leaping into the air as lightning bolts burst from his body, striking the mist ninjas with such force that their skins were charred before they died. Kakashi used the ring to communicate with Naruto, saying, Kitsune, what's your status? Doing good so far on my side, currently slashing and gunning my way through the loyalists. I'm sensing the Mizukage at the far end of the battlefield, apparently waiting for the strongest of the rebels to show up to fight him, Naruto responded. Do not engage him immediately and wait for backup, he's a cage for a reason despite his tyranny in a Jinchuriki with obvious experience in using the Biju's power, Kakashi said. I understand, which is why I'm trying to slow down a little to allow you to catch up so we can meet in the middle with the others. Kakashi sighed, remembering how Naruto inherited his mother's impatience during battle and recalling how Minato would talk about her sometimes diving into battle ahead of others before backup arrived, knowing that he needed to move quickly to meet the young blonde. All right, then, I'll meet you there. Just try not to get too far ahead of yourself. Will do, Ni-san, then the link between them was severed. If Minato sensei were still alive, I'd feel sorry for him having to deal with both Kashina and Naruto at the same time, Kakashi snapped back to attention as he noticed more mist ninjas approaching him. Oh well, I'd better get over there or I'll get an earful for not watching over him when I die, he said as he raised his hand to show the ring and called out, Equip. After seeing visions of a man dressed in a black ninja outfit perched on the spire of a tower with arms crossed and a long black scarf flowing in the wind at night, there was a bright flash of light before fading to reveal Kakashi wielding a single-edged Japanese sword in hand. So he must be one of Naruto's senseis, I can see why he was so strong. I'll be sure to wield this blade with honor, Kakashi said as he dashed towards the group of enemies ahead of him, slashing at them with techniques unfamiliar to him as he attacked with the dragon sword. Kakashi took one down with a vertical slash, then jumped over his next opponent, grabbing his head against his shoulder and performing a centrifugal flip, throwing into one of the mist ninja. Kakashi quickly turned around to block an overhead kanai, then appeared from behind and slashed his back wide open. Several more mist ninjas charged at Kakashi, but the silver-haired Konoha ninja leapt into the air, stomping on their heads as footstools with enough force to knock their faces to the ground. When the fallen mist ninjas stood back up, Kakashi made his move, Haze straight slash. He moved at blurring speeds to appear right behind the group with the dragon sword held in front of him as their heads rolled right off their shoulders before flicking the blood off the blade. Kakashi dashed towards his next target, deflecting any incoming shuriken and kanai, and was soon upon one of the first, sending both skywards with a jumping uppercut. Kakashi slashed the opponent repeatedly before grabbing him in a spinning pile driver, driving the enemy headfirst into the ground with enough brute force to create a powerful shockwave that any mist ninjas nearby could feel. When the recovered mist ninjas launched water jutsus at him, Kakashi capitalized on an opening with the help of his Sharingan and switched back to the offensive, Flying Swallow. He jumped into the air and propelled himself forward to take off several heads with a lightning fast slash across the field. Suddenly, Kakashi was enveloped in a blood-red aura and vanished from their sight, only to reappear in front of one of the loyalists and launch a high-speed barrage of lethal slashes resulting in dismemberment before blinking to another and repeating the process before finding himself standing in the middle of dismembered corpses. They could have lived better lives. Sighed Kakashi. I'd better find Kitsune and put an end to this once and for all. He went to the trees to regroup with his platoon before fighting their way towards the Mizukage. Guy was up next, and thanks to his high-tier taijutsu skills, he's really taking it to the field with the mist ninjas. He was currently punching enemies with overbearing strength, sending them flying away, before quickly spinning around to knock back several more with a jumping roundhouse kick before performing a backflip to retake his strong fist stance. What's the deal with this guy? He's destroying us with taijutsu and has never used ninjutsu. In frustration, one of the loyalists yelled. 
Wait a second, I recognize him. He's Might Guy, Konoha's master of Taijutsu. Exclaimed another, terrified. And let's not forget that I'm also Konoha's green beast of prey, Guy said with a sparkly smile. I'm here to help you defeat your most unyouthful cage while also demonstrating my power of youth. I'm on my way. Guy appeared in front of a mist ninja while in midair and exclaimed, Leaf Great Flash. He lashed out with a rotative high kick for a radial attack on multiple enemies after unleashing a powerful lateral kick while aiming at the head to send him flying away. Guy came to a halt in his spinning to jump and land on a handstand with his legs outstretched, exclaiming, Leaf Coiling Wind. He spun twice as fast as before, forming a mini tornado that blew away all surrounding enemies. Guy was about to continue the assault when he heard Kakashi telepathically call out to him. Guy, can you hear me? Kakashi inquired. Speak up, my eternal rival. So what ails you? Guy replied cheerfully, while Kakashi's sweat dropped on the other side. I'm currently fighting my way through the mist ninjas to catch up with Kitsune. He's apparently making a beeline for the Mizukage, so I need you to hurry over before anything bad happens to him. No worries. If the green beast doesn't arrive soon, I'll run a hundred laps around the village on my hands while strapped to a cart full of weights. Just hurry, Kakashi said before cutting the link. Guy held out his hand to inspect the ring, saying, now to see what weapon appears to empower my flames of youth. Equip, with a flash of light, Guy found himself wearing the X gloves that he remembered Naruto wearing during the Chunin exams against as it ignited in flames and a tongue of flame appearing on his forehead as a rather unnerving calm look came over Guy's face. Now to show you that my flames of youth can. Guy pointed his palms towards the ground and shot flame jets to propel himself skywards in order to avoid some water jutsus. Burning dynamic action, he said as he came back down in a series of somersaults, punching and kicking the loyalists along the way. Guy took to the air again and dove back down, extreme, quickly circling them from the bottom to the top with flames trailing behind until they were completely covered in spiraling flames. He landed close by and waited for the flames to die down, revealing the charred bodies of the mist ninjas. A Junin appeared from behind and quickly performed a series of hand signs before exclaiming, water style, giant vortex jutsu. A massive wave of water erupted from several nearby lakes and raced towards Guy, who remained calm as ever. He stood sideways, one open palm facing the incoming wave and the other pointing in the opposite direction, as the X gloves began to emit intense heat before exclaiming, X burner. One palm fired a small burst of fire, but the other unleashed a massive blaze that pierced through the wave and incinerated the mist ninja. And now to regroup with Kakashi and Kitsune. He exclaimed, shooting fire jets from his gloves as he took off in the direction of either ninja. Back with Naruto, he was taking down as many mist ninjas as he could, but he hadn't escaped unscathed, as gashes could be seen and the Anbu mask has a few cracks. He was currently engaged in multiple combat with a group, ducking and weaving before retaliating with kicks and shots from either ebony or ivory to simply bludgeoning them hard with said firearms. The equalizer has arrived. Deadpool sensei patented it, and as his awesome student, I get to use it on you schnooks. He began to adopt various postures, quickly switching between them as he opened fire on the surrounding enemies, killing them. Naruto retook his stance, albeit panting slightly from minor exhaustion from fighting multiple enemies. These guys keep getting in my way, but I have to keep going. But you're supposed to wait for Kakashi and the others to regroup before engaging Yugura, Kurama explained. Maybe so, but the enemy has seen Naruto-sama to be a serious threat and are placing their focus into killing him. Using your chakra would also alert anyone to his true identity, Chinami explained. Plus, I can't afford to snooze before the big boss battle, Naruto reasoned. They'll have to catch up with me. Fine, just don't take any unnecessary risks, Kurama sighed. 
Naruto-sama, may I suggest using a common rider? It should give you an advantage in battle, but be careful because this one is quite different from the first, said Shinami. I'll take what I can get, thanks for the heads up, thought Naruto is rebellion, ebony, and ivory vanished, and the bracelet flashed brightly before fading to reveal a strange-looking belt strapped to his waist, with an empty storage bay in the middle of the buckle, a blade-like switch to the right, and a display board on the left. Naruto also noticed that he was holding a padlock with an orange design embossed on it. He smirked behind his mask in anticipation as he felt information about these tools flow into his mind. It's time for a little practice run. As the Sengoku driver called, Naruto pressed a switch on the side of the lock seat, causing the shackle to open. Orange. Everyone looked up to see a dimensional gap as something that appeared to be a large metallic orange descended from it, Naruto inserted the lock seat into the bay and pushed down the lock to secure it. Turn on. Henshin. Soya. Said Naruto before pressing the blade knife down to cut open the lock seat. The metallic orange landed on his shoulder before a blue and yellow bodysuit materialized around him, then disassembled to reveal a chest plate and pauldrons, as well as a helmet and a sword with a blade shaped like an orange slice, and a modded katana holstered to his waist. Overall, Naruto now resembles a Japanese samurai with an orange base, orange arms, Hanamichi on stage. Naruto slung the Daidemaru over his shoulder and assumed a horse stance, chanting the catchphrase of the original owner before sprinting to re-engage the enemy. As he parried a strike, then countered with a powerful hook to the face of one, then dashing to the side in time to avoid a volley of shuriken, Naruto unsheathed the Muso saber and pulled a small lever on the hilt before taking aim and pulling the trigger to fire three rounds of bullets to take him down. I'm going to cut you up into a fruit salad. With the Muso saber drawn, Naruto attacked twice as hard, parrying strikes and countering them with his own. Naruto ducked under a kanab swing and lashed out with a high kick, launching the mist ninja into the air, then somersaulted after him, performing an aerial cross slash before landing back on the ground. He looked around to see that several more mist ninjas had surrounded him, weapons drawn and ready to attack. There may be strength in numbers. But only in my case. He exclaimed as he pressed the cutting blade on the driver once. Autumn Squash The Daidemaru's blade glowed as it began to charge with orange energy, and Naruto performed a 360-degree spin slash to eliminate all of the enemies with a single hit, exclaiming, I'm not done with you yet. Naruto held out the Muso Saber and the Daidemaru and combined them to form the Naginata mode as he twirled it around like a staff, then launched radial attacks with the fused blades as he performed a low sweeping kick to knock one off his feet before vaulting off the weapon to stomp his midsection, driving him deeper into the ground, then he performed a handless cartwheel to the side to evade. As the Sengoku driver called out, Naruto removed the orange lock seed from the buckle and inserted it into the bay of the Muso saber. Lock on. 1, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000. As Naruto swung the Muso saber several times to energy slashes at the enemies, trapping them in large orange energy spheres, he changed stances with the Daidemaru's blade end charging with energy as well, it's over. Orange Strike He then dashed towards them, slicing all of the orange spheres in half, resulting in a chain of explosions and him finally getting some breathing space. Naruto-kun, I can feel Isobu's chakra ahead of us exclaimed Karama. All right, then, time for some gunboat diplomacy. Naruto reached for the lockseed holder and took out a lockseed with an embossed design of a Sakura petal. He pushed a button on the side and tossed it ahead, causing the lockseed to transform into a dirt bike with a Sakura motif. Naruto hopped on and revved the engine before taking off at high speed, popping a wheelie along the way. Yugura sat alone in the grassy field in a Siza position, his club laying next to him, as he meditated during another part of the battle. Suddenly, he heard a strange sound that was unfamiliar to him and appeared to be approaching his position. When he opened his eyes, he saw something flying out of the trees, landing on the ground, 
and then sliding to a stop in front of him. It was a samurai in armor riding on a metallic contraption with wheels attached to it. When the samurai stepped off the machine, Yagura was surprised to see it fold up into a small padlock before landing in the warrior's hand. So. You must be one of the people recruited by the rebels to fight against me, Yagura said as he rose to his feet, club in hand. Naruto stowed the lock seat and then drew the Daidemaru. You guessed correctly, though I have personal reasons for wanting to assist in your demise. And what exactly would that be? Yagura assumed a fighting stance. I'll tell you. When you have 10 seconds left. I'll crush you, then those with filthy blood. Both warriors dashed towards each other, clashing in the middle with their swords and clubs, signaling the start of a fierce battle between Jinchuriki. That is one of the most common sounds heard in Kirigakure's many battles, but this will be the very last battle between the rebel forces and the Mizukage and his army, as the cage himself was facing down a warrior in strange armor who was apparently recruited by Mei Terumi. Naruto, dressed as common rider Gaim, was attacking and defending against Yagura with the Daidemaru and Musou Saber, who was wielding his hooked long club deftly. He blocked with the Musou Saber and attacked with the Daidemaru via horizontal slash, but Yagura leapt into the air and descended with a descending smash, causing Naruto to dash sideways to avoid the strike, then lashed out with a mid-kick, only to miss and be struck in the chest with the club, sending him tumbling back. Naruto quickly combined the Daidemaru and Musou Sabers to form the Naginata mode before charging in to engage him again. Man, this is the prowess of a Mizukage. This beats history lessons, Naruto thought as he quickly attacked and defended against Yagura, who demonstrated his proficiency in Bojutsu similar to that of the third Hokage. Naruto-sama, please stay focused. I can tell your opponent is still not taking you seriously, Shinami said. She's right, Naru-kun, and I don't mean Isobu when I say that, Kurama said. What do you mean? Naruto inquired. I'm not sure, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. Alright, just keep me posted, Naruto said as he saw Yagura weave through a seal of hand signs to perform a jutsu. Water style. Wild water wave. He opened his mouth to launch water in the shape of a waterfall towards Naruto, then quickly pressed down on the Sengoku driver to activate his next attack. Autumn Squash. He then leapt into the air over the rushing water jutsu, engulfed in orange energy, before passing through a long line of orange slices, a high concentration of orange energy focused on his right foot as he launched at the Mizukage with a flying sidekick. Yagura saw the incoming attack and stopped using the jutsu before speeding through another set of hand signs for another one, water style, water mirror jutsu. Water then rose from the ground to form a large flat circular pool of water in front of him, then he used the hook end of his club to tilt the mirror, to show Naruto's reflect, suddenly the reflection materialized from the mirror and rushed at the original with the same technique much to the blonde's surprise. Both attacks collided in the middle, resulting in an explosion that knocked him back and the reflection dispersed into water. Naruto recovered in midair and landed with a skid on the ground. Damn, I wouldn't have seen it coming, Naruto said as he retook his combat stance. If this is the extent of your power, I'm truly disappointed, Yagura scoffed. You shouldn't, because I'm just getting started myself, Naruto sheathed the Musou saber and reached to the side holder to take out a lock seed with a strawberry symbol on it and pressed the side button. Ichigo. The driver exclaimed, Naruto took out the orange lock seed, his armor dissolving as a large metallic strawberry descended through the zipper-like dimensional opening, he inserted the lock seed into the bay, and locked it in place, lock on. He then cut the lock seed, Soya. The metallic strawberry landed on his shoulder and unfolded into Japanese ninja armor, with kanai with strawberries on the blades, Ichigo arms, Shushuto spark. With a smirk behind his helmet, Naruto held up the kanai and dashed towards the Mizukage, attacking with greater speed than when he was using orange arms. His kanai strike was blocked, but he quickly switched to a low sweep kick, 
only for Yagura to jump into the air before descending with an incoming club strike, so Naruto unsheathed the Musou saber in a reverse grip and deflected the attack before retaliating by throwing a kanai, slicing Yagura's left cheek open and quickly putting some distance between them. Yagura's eyes narrowed in anger as he went through a set of hand signs, water style, water snakes. Water swirled around him before taking shape of multiple serpents which then launched at Naruto, he quickly dashed from left to right whilst slashing at the water constructs with the kanai in his advance then he leapt high into the air and proceeded to fling the kanai and materializing more to throw. Yugura twirled his club around to deflect the incoming projectiles and jumped backwards to recover, but Naruto landed back on the ground and kept up the pressure, lashing out with a jumping roundhouse that missed and quickly crossed his arms to block the retaliatory strike with the force knocking him back, but he refused to back down launching another barrage of kanai at his opponent. Water Style. Water Wall. Yugura summoned a water barrier around himself to defend against the kanai before switching to the offensive, water style, triple water dragon bullet. He summoned three large water dragon constructs to loom overhead before directing them towards Naruto. Oh shoot. Naruto quickly drew the Musou saber and extracted the Ichigo lock seed from the buckle, inserting it into the Musou Saber's bay as the Sengoku driver called out. Turn on. 1, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000. Naruto took a stance as the Musou Saber end charged up with strawberry energy then he swung it at the sky to unleash as a giant energy-shaped strawberry that explodes into countless amounts of kanai that dispersed one of the water dragons, he swung two more times to take down the others before launching one more barrage at Yagura who slammed a palm on the ground for a large coral reef to burst in front of him and block the kanai much to Naruto's shock. At first I thought you were just a peon foolish enough to fight me, but now I see you're becoming a threat, Yagura frowned. I'm glad to see you're taking me more seriously now, Naruto said with a smirk. Indeed, but it also spells your doom. Yagura's body began to radiate with red chakra, forming a cloak with two tails waving from behind him, causing Naruto to stiffen his guard. Only fools would challenge a Jinchuriki on their own, Naruto said. Ah, a whole lot more difficult now that he's using Isobu's chakra. Would have been a different story if I wasn't keeping a low profile here, any suggestions? Naruto swung the Musou saber to launch a barrage of kanai. Yagura smirked in response before actually blurring from sight and appearing before a stunned Naruto to slam a powerful straight punch into his chest plate. Use the Kachidoki lock seat. It should help you a lot, Shinami advised. But will it be enough to match him right now? Karama worriedly asked. In the meantime, but if the enemy uses more power, he should use stronger weapons. I'll keep it in mind. Naruto rose to his feet and removed the Ichigo lock seed, bringing out another orange lock seed that was different from the first, and pressing its button, Kachidoki. He inserted them into the driver and depressed the lock, lock on. And then opened it with the cutting knife, Soya. A zipper-like dimensional opening appeared, with a large metallic orange descending before settling on Naruto to unfold into armor resembling a fully armored Japanese shogun form complete with twin orange battle flags marked with his emblem in black on his back, Soya. Is a Shutsujin from Kachidoki Arms. Oh. A. A. Ha. As if that new armor will work against me. Yagura scoffed, then dashed forward again, punching Naruto in the chest plate once more, but this time, much to his surprise, he did budge an inch. Naruto snatched his fist and returned it with a stronger punch, causing Yugura to spit out saliva, which turned into blood upon receiving another and being sent flying back. Doesn't it hurt? That's how I felt when you punched me, Naruto said, flexing his left fist. Yugura stood up and glared, his wounds already healing, why you? He dashed at his opponent with the intent of taking him down, Naruto reached behind him and took out the battle flags before charging back into the middle. The battle flags emitted a flaming aura as Naruto swung them to the ground to create a hot gust of air to knock Yugura into the air, then he quickly closed the gap between them to smash him to the ground with the flags. 
You're really getting on my nerves. Yagura put his club away and took a stance before charging at Naruto to engage him in taijutsu. The blonde tried to defend against the attacks and retaliate, but his reduced speed wasn't helping his case at the moment and he was struck several times, but the armor reduced the damage inflicted. He was about to attack again when he noticed that part of his body was restrained and turned to see his arm encased in coral and spreading, much to his surprise. What is this? Naruto struggled to break free as the coral spread further. That must be Isobu's coral palm technique. Any physical contact will cause coral to grow all over your body and restrain you, Kurama explained. Well, I'm not going to be a statue for anyone here. Naruto pressed the cutting knife on the driver three times with his free hand. Kachidoki shining. The coral was shattered as the Kachidoki armor folded into its fruit form for a few moments before unfolding back into its armor form, and Naruto stretched an arm out to summon what appears to be a futuristic Tanegashima rifle with a DJ turntable built into the side. Naruto scratched the turntable, causing it to play a catchy tune as he took aim and fired a shotgun blast at the Mizukage, who dashed from side to side while throwing chakra-enhanced shuriken at him. Naruto ducked and weaved around them to continue firing but couldn't seem to hit his target, so he turned the knob to increase the pitch and scratched the turntable before pulling the trigger to fire at a rapid rate. Yugura quickly took cover behind a tree and weaved through a series of hand signs before calling out the jutsu, water style, water clone jutsu. He created multiple water clones and ordered them to attack the enemy. Naruto saw the clones and fired at them, killing some of them, but the others were quickly approaching him, so he drew the Musou Saber and switched to defensive tactics to keep them away from him. Naruto lowered his voice and jumped away from one of the clones before firing a cannon-like blast that exploded, scattering some of them. He continued to wait and counter their attacks until there were none left. When Naruto noticed something approaching him from behind, he quickly inserted the Musou Saber into the DJ gun to form a single-edged greatsword and turned around to block a powerful strike, pushing him back a little. When Naruto looked up, he was taken aback to see Yugura encased in a dark red, nearly black layer of chakra shaped like a three-tailed turtle. What is it now? Naruto inquired. That's the second version of a Jinchuriki using the power of a Biju, Kurama explained. Perhaps I should have listened to Kakashi Ni about not fighting him alone, Naruto reflected. What do you think? Mei and her squadron were currently engaged in combat with the Loyalist in another part of the battlefield. She was using her Taijutsu to knock back any enemies who came too close to her, then using her Lava Bloodline to take them down with more to take their place and fight, much to her chagrin. She was about to proceed when she heard a loud explosion somewhere far away. What was that just now? Mei wondered, the sound of the explosion indicating a clash of two powerful sources. She could easily deduce that Yugura is one of the sources, but who else can compete with him, especially given his biju power? Don't tell me Naruto-kun is facing Yugura on his own, is he? I've got to get there and help him. She raised her hand to look at the ring on her finger before calling out, Equip. There was a bright flash of light before fading to reveal her holding a pair of blue war fans with razor-sharp blades sticking out. At first perplexed, Mei suddenly experienced visions of a woman dressed in a blue outfit wielding war fans against an opponent in what appears to be a tournament. Both beautiful and dangerous, I like that in a girl like her she said before taking the fighting stance and waiting for the enemy to attack. When the first group charged at her, hurling shuriken and kanai at her, Mei quickly used the fans to push them back and close the gap between them. The loyalists slashed at Mei with their katanas as she danced in and out of their attacks, then tossed the fans for them to fly around her, slicing the surrounding enemies before catching them. Mei rushed up to one of the fans and stabbed him in the chest before spinning around to slash the loyalist attempting to ambush her from behind before returning to her hand. A loyalist charged towards her with a zanbato raised to cleave, but Mei vanishes in a violet cloud and reappears behind her opponent with both fans closed, 
ready to stab the back of his neck and spine. To take her down, some loyalists launched a volley of water bullets from a distance. May spun quickly to form a tornado, reflecting the water projectiles back at them, then swung her fans to generate a powerful windstorm, lifting them helplessly into the air before throwing them to slice them into pieces in midair. I can't afford to waste any more time here. May clashed the fans together to create a spark, then dashed with chakra boosting her speed and was slashing at her enemies rapidly as they stood in her path, barely able to put up any defense before being cut down. May finally slowed her high-speed assault and turned to look back sadly at the fallen foes. They both came from the same village, and yet here they are killing each other over something as insignificant as a difference in blood type, and the Mizukage was the one who started all this meaningless bloodshed. Hold on Naruto-kun, I'm coming, and together we'll put an end to this war once and for all. Mei jumped through the trees as fast as she could towards the location of the last explosion heard. Back with Naruto, he's constantly clashing with Yugura and having to shatter any coral that tries to retrain his movement while inflicting damage on the Mizukage, and it's not getting any easier as the battle continues. Naruto had just blocked a powerful punch with the DJ gun's blade mode and was sent skidding backwards, but dashed back to re-engage him in close combat once more, blade continuing to clash with fists and tails, but Naruto was beginning to slow down a bit from the gradually increasing fatigue and jumped back to catch a breath. Pant. Pant man. We're not getting anywhere like this, Naruto observed Yugura getting down on all fours with his mouth wide open as small balls of blue and red chakra fused to form a large purple sphere of chakra. What is he doing? It can't be. He had mastered Isobu's chakra to the point where he could use it, Kurama exclaimed. What do you mean, Kurama-san, do you know it? Chinami inquired, seeing the vixen's stunned expression. He's about to use the tailed beast ball, which is the ultimate tailed beast technique and highly destructive. You must get out of its way. I can't. If I do, it will take out both the rebels and the loyalists. My best chance will be to destroy it before he can launch it with a power finishing move, and I have to do it fast. Naruto removed the Kachidoki lock seed from the driver and inserted it into the DJ gun's bay. Lock it. As the blade ignited in red-hot flames, Naruto began to run, 1, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, 100 million, 1 trillion, Maride. Tailed Beast Ball. Yugura exclaimed as she prepared to fire. Kachidoki attack. Seiha. Naruto unleashed a cleaving attack. Boom. The collision of two powerful attacks resulted in a massive explosion, leaving a massive crater in its wake. Naruto slowly rose to his feet, his anbu gear in shambles and a portion of his mask broken, revealing one of his eyes and tufts of blonde hair. Damn. That explosion was enough to knock me out of my common rider form, Naruto groaned as he rose to his feet and turned to face the crater, which was surrounded by a cloud of dust. That was dangerous, Naruto-kun. Kurama said sternly. It's a good thing the Kachidoki arms have a strong defense, or you would have been killed by that blast, Chinami said. Makes me wonder what happened to Yugura then? thought Naruto, as he felt the ground tremble from what appeared to be heavy footsteps from something big. Very big and heading his way, Naruto looked to see a very large shadow from behind the dust cloud and growing larger with each step taken. Forget I asked, I'm about to find out, he said. The dust finally settled, revealing Yugura, but in a drastically different form than the previous two. It's a big turtle with a crab-like shell, spikes all over it, and three shrimp-like tails. It has red, muscle-like tissue under its shell. It has human-like arms and hands but no back legs. His face is hidden behind a large forehead and lower jaw with spikes, and his eyes are red with crimson pupils. To think I had to use my full power to shield myself from the blast, you keep annoying me with every single second of your existence. Now you really must die yelled Yugura, enraged. Normally, 
I would shrug this kind of stuff off, but now. I feel so tiny, Naruto had to raise his head to look up at the beast. Naruto-kun, be careful. Karama exclaimed. Oh shiitake mushrooms. Naruto channeled chakra to the bracelet and called out, ride the wing road. He quickly equipped the air treks and took off at high speed with the mizukage pursuing him. Naruto rapidly darted and drifted around the trees and using fallen trees as ramps to launch himself into the air from time to time and you see. Naruto was running through the forest when he noticed someone approaching him. He braced himself for a short fight while devising a strategy to counter Yugura's relentlessness, but it was only after a closer look that he recognized who it was, Mei. Kitsune-kun? What is Kaya? Mei was about to say more when Naruto dashed over to her in bridal carry and dashed as fast as he could, what's going on? Well, long story short, I've been fighting Yugura Teme and irritated him to the point where he's now using the full power of his biju to try and kill me plus you now, Naruto quickly replied as he continued skating, Mei looking over his shoulder to see said person rolling after them. Do you have anything to fight him with? Worried Mei, Naruto shifted to the right quickly before responding. As of now, I've got nothing but I'm sure to come with something, said Naruto, on that subject, any suggestions Chinami-san? I'm sick of being the Jerry to that guy's Tom. I'm currently searching the archives for a weapon capable of combating the Mizukage. All I need is some time. Chinami said, her eyes closed in concentration as unraveled scrolls swirled around her. I need to get out of this Indiana Jones situation as soon as possible. When Naruto noticed a large dark shadow looming over him in May, they looked up only to see the Mizukage fall towards them with a body slam, kicking the air treks into overdrive and taking off, leaving a long trail of dust behind. They barely got out of range when the transformed Jinshuriki crashed to the ground. Die, you filthy maggots. Yagura roared as he opened his mouth and launched a powerful stream of water. Naruto carried Mei out of the way of the attack and watched as it smashed through the forest, leaving only a long deep trench in the ground. Hey! That is offensive to us! Naruto exclaimed. Now is not the time to say that! Mei explained. When a stream of flames struck Yugura in the face from above, everyone turned to see that it came from Guy, who was hovering in the air with the help of the X gloves, and soon Kakashi landed next to Naruto and Mei, the dragon sword sheathed at his back. Sorry for the delay. We were stuck in a ninja traffic jam on our way here, Kakashi explained. That's a new one, muttered Naruto. So, what is our plan of attack? Guy floated to land next to them. Naruto and Kakashi were both taken aback by how calm the normally boisterous Naruto was at the moment, and Naruto was about to speak up when he heard Kurama call out to him. Naruto-kun. I've discovered what was so familiar about Yugura, and I can't believe it, Kurama said grimly. What exactly is it? Inquired Naruto. The Genjutsu has been placed on Yugura, as well as the chakra that I believe belongs to that masked Uchiha who attacked on the night of your birth. What? You mean to tell me that this war? This damn war was caused by this guy once more? In disbelief at what he's hearing right now, Naruto asked. I'm afraid so. I never expected him to do something like this. Naruto clenched his fists tightly, his nails piercing through his gloves into his skin, drawing blood. Not only was this Uchiha bastard responsible for his parents' deaths and him becoming an orphan, but now he discovers that he is the cause of the war that has victimized Haku and taken the lives of numerous bloodliners. Kitsune. What happened to make you emit so much ki? Kakashi inquired. Sorry, Kakashi sensei, I just learned of something unbelievable. I'll tell you about it later, but for now, I have to stop this guy before he kills anyone else, Naruto calmly responded. Kakashi immediately knew that his godson is extremely angry because he witnessed the same thing from Minato, which he and Kashina secretly labeled, Silent Rage, an action speaks much louder and painfully than words when in that state. 
What caused him to become so enraged? Pondered Kakashi. Naruto-sama, I've discovered a weapon capable of defeating the Mizukage. I'm sending the knowledge to you right away, Shinami said, and Naruto saw visions of a beast roaring in the sky. Thank you. This will suffice. Naruto dashed ahead of the others as the bracelet began to glow brightly, then yelled, Roar of the Steeled Leo. The light eventually faded away to reveal a colossal mechanical animal in the form of a lion with a color scheme of blue, yellow, white, what is also to be noted would be the large single-edged blade which is attached to a swiveling arm on the block. The beast eyes glowed yellow as it unleashed a thunderous roar into the sky. W what exactly is this? Yugura was surprised, and he wasn't the only one. Everyone else who was watching was as well. I never would have guessed the bracelet was capable of this scale, Kakashi marveled. I'm afraid I have to agree with you, Guy said. Amazing, and by someone so young, Mei exclaimed. We need to get clear, there is no doubt that the battle between them will be great, Kakashi said, having experienced such battles in the past. The rest agreed hesitantly and quickly vacated the area. Please Liger, lend me your strength to defeat the enemy before me, Naruto said from inside the beast's cockpit, his eyes closed. Thank you. Let's go for it. The beast said softly. They then charged towards the transformed Jinchuriki in preparation for a final battle. I will destroy you regardless of what you use. Yagura roared as he charged towards them. Shock cannon is activated. Naruto yelled as Liger skidded to a halt and began firing rounds from the triple-barreled cannons on its chest. Yagura crossed his arms in front of his face to brace himself against the incoming attacks, then he retaliated by launching multiple water bullets. Naruto quickly piloted Liger to dash to the side to evade the incoming water spheres, then charged towards the opponent while maintaining evasive maneuvers. Liger leapt into the air, both claws glowing, and swiped multiple times at Yagura, who was enduring the attacks, before responding with a headbutt to knock him back. Hard Sea Spume Yugura opened his mouth, releasing a torrent of water that slammed into Naruto and Liger, the high pressure pushing them back with great force. Gur, Liger, hang in there. Naruto yelled as the lion-type Zoid roared in and dug its claws into the ground for traction until the technique finally stopped. Now it's our turn to attack. He switched to manual firing of the dual sword cannon to shoot down the incoming water bullets while Liger dashed towards Yugura with its laser claws active once more to strike wildly with Naruto providing backup fire. Yugura punched Liger and curled up into a ball to spin rapidly with sparks flying around then sending them flying away. Liger quickly rolled back to its feet, and Naruto piloted it to charge at Yugura, manipulating the blade to shift into a 90 degree angle on its right side. He increased the energy output for a significant boost in speed. Both beasts clashed in the middle with sparks flying once more as they struggled for dominance with neither side willing to give out or give in. Eventually both were forced to disengage and passed by each other before turning around and resuming their combat stance. Aside from Shukaku-chan, Isobu-kun has the most powerful physical defense of the nine of us. It's even surprising that you could scratch it, Kurama said. Can I land a critical strike on him? Naruto inquired, keeping a close eye on his opponent. Well, since it has turtle characteristics, it must also have turtle weaknesses, Shinami reasoned. I wonder if... Naruto took a closer look at Yugura and noticed something he had almost overlooked and immediately had an idea. I see, I know what my next move will be. Liger, I'm going to need your assistance to pull this off, Zoid agreed. Both turned to face Mizukage, who was charging up another tailed beast ball. Get out of my sight. Then he launched the destructive technique from his mouth at his enemies, and Liger began dashing towards the projectile itself, much to the surprise of everyone watching. What on earth is he doing? That is far too dangerous. Kakashi explained. Get out of the way, Kitsune-kun. Mei yelled, concerned. Wait, 
I think he's onto something, Guy said, as calm as ever. Liger's body began to emit a fiery red aura as Naruto yelled, Evolt. The aura fully engulfed the Zoid then faded slightly to reveal it in a new form. The blue color had been replaced with red and multiple blades could be seen all over its body and a pair of short swords are mounted on the sides of the forelegs as it roared with renewed energy. Hayate Liger Liger activated the twin boosters on its back to 50% power and nimbly leapt over the tailed beast ball and pounced at the mizukage with its laser claws active as it rapidly slashed with twice the speed of its default form. The Zoid grabbed the Jinchuriki with its teeth and repeatedly slammed it to the ground before flinging it away then disappeared in a red blur to rapidly strike from multiple directions and skidded to a stop. Just as I suspected, the armor on the underbelly is not as strong as the rest of its body. Now to complete this. Naruto set the boosts to 100% this time. Liger took off like a red comet and unleashed a barrage of slashes on Yugura, knocking him high into the air and finishing him with a mighty slash from the short swords. This cannot be. No. Yugura screamed in agony as he was forced back into his more human form before collapsing to the ground. Liger also returned to its normal form and let out a triumphant roar before disappearing in a flash of light as Naruto landed on the treetops. It's over now, this war is over, Naruto said. Naruto leapt through the trees towards the Mizukage's crash site, where he discovered him lying in a crater with cuts, bruises, burns, and his clothes tattered and mostly destroyed, soon joined by Kakashi, Mei, Gai, and Zabuza. Looks like I missed a good show, Zabuza lamented. I'm afraid you did. Glad to see I'm not the only one who is frequently late, Kakashi said with an eye smile. I'm not going to let you rub your hip and cool attitude on my eternal rival. Guy declared loudly. I already miss his calm self. He was much quieter that way, Kakashi reflected with a sweat drop. I never thought I'd be alive to see the day when Yugura would be lying before us defeated and the war would be over, Zabuza said, looking down on the defeated Mizukage. I feel the same way, finally no more pointless bloodshed, Mei said to Naruto, and I have you to thank for it. Naruto was about to respond when they heard a pained ground and turned to look Yugura slowly open his eyes and look back at them, the only difference being that his eyes lacked the coldness and malice from before, but rather sorrow and regret much to everyone's surprise except Naruto. So you were the ones who finally stopped me. I'm grateful for that, Yugura sighed. What are you on about? You were the one who started this madness. Mei explained. I didn't start the war of my own free will, I was placed in an unbreakable genjutsu by a masked man in a black cloak, Yugura said, shaking his head. The last thing I saw before losing my sense of self was a Sharingan eye, and the rest was a long nightmare from which I couldn't wake up no matter how hard I tried. Like I'd believe such a pathetic story, Zabuza scoffed. He's not lying in the least, Naruto said, surprising the others. What exactly do you mean? Kakashi inquired, perplexed. The chakra used to perform the genjutsu on him matches the chakra used on the day of the Kyubi attack, Naruto stated matter-of-factly. You mean the one responsible for the Kyubi attack is the same guy who caused this war? Zabuza inquired, his anger for the enigmatic Uchiha growing. At least, she confirms it. It may appear that he caused the war to serve as a smokescreen and avoid being tracked by anyone, Kakashi explained. It seems like my time is drawing near. But I doubt my death would be enough to compensate for the deaths I caused, Yugura said, drawing everyone's attention back to him. Deaths that were not of your own volition, as you stated, May lamented. Even so. I failed miserably as a cage, to be reduced to nothing more than a madman's puppet. He turned to May. I leave the safety of the village to you, I've witnessed how hard you fought up until and I'm willing to bestow the title of cage upon you. On one condition. What exactly is it? Inquired Mei. All I ask is that you restore and lead the village to its true glory.
Mei remained silent as everyone awaited her response before finally saying. I'll do it, I'll become the next Mizukage. Thank you, Yagura said contentedly. So, what will happen to the Sanbi? Inquired Naruto. I've talked to it, and we've agreed to free it from the seal, then go into hiding and restore itself. I see. Naruto reflected, I guess we won't be meeting your little brother just yet. Don't worry, I'm sure he'll be fully recovered in a few years, Karama said. All I can say now is thank you for stopping me. And I am truly sorry for being unable to stop myself from doing all of this. As Yugura breathed his last, a red orb of chakra emerged from his chest and flew away over the mountain to a location unknown to the group. Naruto took out a scroll from his ninja pouch and raveled it before placing the late Mizukage's body on the scroll and sealing it away. I think it's best that it stays in your possession, he rolled it back up and handed it to Mei. Thank you, Mei said gratefully, now let us regroup with everyone and finally put this war to rest. The group then returned to the main battlefield, deeply contemplating the hidden player in a game they had no knowledge of but were still playing but they could tell there was more to this than what they were currently aware of. So I guess it's time for you all to return to Konoha, said Mei, who was sitting on a chair behind a desk inside the Mizukage's office alongside Ao and Chojuro, and she was talking to the Konoha Shinobi, who was still wearing his Anbu out outfit with a spare mask. I would have liked for you to stay for a while longer, she said. As much as we would like to, we must return to Konoha and report to our Hokage on the recent events, particularly that one, Kakashi said. Now that the war is over, there is still a place for you to return Zabuza. We're planning on creating another generation of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist, and we could use your help, Ao said. That's nice to hear, but I can't because I already have a place to call home thanks to a certain blonde Gaki, Zabuza replied, a grin hidden behind his mask. Plus I've got a bowl of sushi waiting for me back there with my name on it. I must return and assist in rekindling the youthful flames of my beloved students. Guy exclaimed loudly, causing everyone to sweat drop. Inside voice, Guy, inside voice, Kakashi rubbed his temples at his friend's antics. And you still have a long way to go before everything is restored after everything that's happened, Naruto explained. You're right, Kitsune-kun, Mei sighed. Following Yugura's defeat, the majority of loyalists surrendered, with a few foolishly deciding to go out with guns blazing and being put down. When the Mizukage was finally defeated, the civilians, particularly those who possessed Keke Jenke, rejoiced and celebrated. They credited Mei and the rebel forces while thanking the Konoha Shinobi, though Naruto chose to remain anonymous in order to avoid drawing attention to himself, which was one of the primary reasons he dressed up as Anbu in the first place. The group agreed not to reveal the true nature of the Mizukage's tyrannical rule because the ramifications would be severe, such as civilians blaming Konoha for what happened because of the masked Uchiha whether they were technically innocent or not until they were able to capture the perpetrator and then reveal the truth. Naruto also advised them to hire Tazuna to assist with the rebuilding and to use his name as a guarantee. Hum, perhaps I could request for his involvement on missions after everything is stable, then he can come and stay around more frequently. Mei took a scroll from the drawer and held it out to Kakashi, give this to your Hokage, it contains terms of agreement for an alliance between the two villages, we'll converse more thanks to the trans scroll which you have given us. We'll make sure to pass it over to her safely, Kakashi said as he accepted the scroll. Will we see you again, Kitsune-san? Chojuro wondered nervously. Naruto smiled behind his mask and gave him a thumbs up. Sure thing, though under different circumstances, he said. Chojuro perked up when he heard, okay. Take care of yourself, Kitsune-san. I hope this experience helps you mature into a good shinobi, Ao advised. However, Mei interpreted the sentence differently, experience. Maturity. Both required for marriage, she said as she turned towards Ao with an all-too-sweet smile, Ao. Shut up or I'll kill you. H. Hai Mei Sama. Ao appeared to be about to pass out, 
while the others felt the need to flee to the hills, except for Naruto, who felt a slight chill instead. That guy really needs to learn how to avoid using words with double meanings or he won't live long enough to get married, Kakashi reflected with a sweat drop. We hope to see you again, Mizukage sama Naruto said politely. Ah, you can call me Mei-chan the next time, Mei said with a flirtatious wink, while Naruto blushed behind his mask. Get going. Kurama almost yelled out of jealousy, and she wanted him away from her. For the time being. Calm down, Kurama-san, Chinami said soothingly, eventually doing so. Ao and Chojuro escorted the group to the village gate and bade them farewell as they left. Naruto and the others took to leaping through the trees and arrived at Konoha's gates in a few weeks. Naruto was overjoyed to be returning home after everything that had happened. They went to the Hokage mansion and went inside to find Tsunade, Shizune, and Hiruzen, who all smiled brightly upon seeing them. It's good to see you've all returned safely. We've heard that the civil war has ended in the rebels' favor, Hiruzen smiled. Naruto removed his mask and replied with a foxy grin, Yeah, totally kicked some ass while we were over there, then frowned, surprising the others, but we discovered something unexpected as well. What do you mean, Naruto-kun? Shizune wondered. Let's just say that the former Mizukage didn't start the bloodline purge of his own free will, and that it was instead caused by an outside source, Kakashi said. Could you please tell us what happened? Tsunade asked, assuming Naruto and Kakashi's seriousness meant they'd learned of something extremely important to the village. To say they were surprised when Kakashi and Naruto told them what happened at Kirigakure and what Yugura revealed to them before he died, and Kurama confirmed that the genjutsu used on the night of Naruto's birth, would be an understatement of the year. I never would have guessed anything like this would have happened, and it certainly seemed odd that the Mizukage would do something like that without an accurate reason, Hiruzen frowned. The masked Uchiha was able to put Kurama under a genjutsu, so he could just as easily do the same to the other biju and their Jinchuriki, and he also used the civil war as a method of distraction and preventing anyone from seeking him out, which is very unsettling, Tsunade said. And I have a feeling this Uchiha is also a member of the Akatsuki, making this group even more dangerous than I thought possible, Kakashi said. I think I'd be doing both villages a favor if I found this guy separated his head from his shoulders, and gouged out that eye of his, Zabuza raged. Better get in line, because that guy is at the top of my shitlist now more than ever, Naruto said. It's important that we gather more information about this group, Jiraiya is currently doing that but we might need to seek information on our own as well, Hiruzen coughed loudly to get their attention. In the meantime, you three have been through a lot so I suggest that you all go to your homes and rest before later returning with your missions report. Very well, Sarutobi-sama, Kakashi said as he walked away. Same here, make sure to let Haku know I'll be by tomorrow Gaki, Zabuza was the next to depart. I'd better get going, Sakura-chan and the others must be worried about me as well, Naruto said as he removed his Anbu gear and walked out of the office, leaving Tsunade, Hiruzen, and Shizun behind. What do you think of all this? Tsunade inquired solemnly. The fact that this unknown Uchiha is still at large is bad enough, but now that this Akatsuki is hunting for the Biju, we may be facing a threat greater than anything we've ever faced before, Hiruzen said. So, what do we do? Shizun worriedly asked. We need to prepare for any encounters with any of the members and try to reduce their numbers bit by bit, Hiruzen said, to which the others agreed. Meanwhile, Naruto was walking down the streets towards his house, and some of the villagers greeted him politely, though there were still a few who frowned at him, though not with the same hatred as before. Naruto simply shrugged it off, as it had lost all meaning by this point. Hum, should I get some ramen to take home? pondered Naruto. Oh no you don't, go home first before doing anything else, Kurama said sternly. She's right, Naruto-sama, your loved ones must still be waiting for you, and you shouldn't delay, Chinami agreed. 
Okay, you got a point there. Haku must be worried out of all of the girls, Naruto said placatingly, before abruptly stopping and looking to his left at a wooden fence. You three can come out now, you guys really need a new approach since it's the second time you're using this method, he said. A slight distortion occurred before a cloth resembling the appearance of the fence was unraveled to reveal Konohamaru, Moegi, and Udon, who cheered upon seeing their boss, brother figure. Where have you been all this time, Naruto Nissan? We couldn't find you anywhere, Konohamaru pouted. Yeah, even Aruka sensei had no idea where you were, Moegi said, and Udon agreed. Sorry about that guys, I was sent out on a mission, Naruto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. What kind of mission? Konohamaru inquired. I can't tell you three because it's a top secret mission, the blonde joked causing the trio to grumble a little. Anyway, I'm heading home right now so I'll see you three later okay? Alright, Nissan. The trio exclaimed as they ran away, waving goodbye to the blonde. Naruto smiled fondly before continuing his walk to the house, but made a mental note to check in on Aruka later. He eventually arrived at the door and unlocked it with his key before entering. However, he had only taken three steps when a green blur slammed into him and flew out to the front yard. Naruto groaned slightly before noticing a familiar green hair and realizing who had just tackled him. Hello, Fu-chan, Naruto said cheerfully. We really missed you, Naruto-kun, Fu returned to the house, Naruto back. Kuns soon, there were running footsteps, followed by Haku, Hanada, Ino, and Sakura. When they saw the blonde, they burst into tears, especially Haku, and went to engulf him in a tight hug. You shouldn't be making us feel that way about you. Exclaimed Ino happily. She's right, Naruto-kun, Sakura said. I'm sorry about that. I'll try not to do it again, Naruto apologized. We're just glad you came back alive and kept your promise, Haku sobbed. Me too. Let's go inside because I'm a little tired from everything that happened, Naruto said, and the girls nodded in agreement before shoving the blonde inside and seating him in the parlor while Hinata and Ino went to the kitchen to prepare some tea. Fu sat next to Naruto, and Haku sat across from him, her hand intertwined with his, as if afraid he would vanish. Tora sat curled up on his lap, fast asleep and softly purring. Hanada and Ino came back with the tea and sat down as well. So, what happened when you were in Kirigakure? Ino inquired. Well, it went like this. Naruto proceeded to tell the girls about the war and its aftermath. The girls were surprised and concerned when he mentioned the former Mizukage being a Jinchuriki before his defeat. Needless to say, the bloodline war is officially over, he said. I'm so relieved to hear that, no one will lose their families anymore, Haku exclaimed. Yeah, but you girls should keep this to yourselves for the time being, okay? Said Naruto, and the girls nodded in agreement. Thanks, I'll be going to sleep for now. I'm really tired right now, said Naruto. Okay, we'll run a few errands anyway, Hanada said. Naruto carried Tora upstairs to his bedroom where he changed his clothes before settling into his bed and falling asleep. Naruto awoke after a few hours and rolled to the side of his bed, only to see a pair of eyes staring back at him. Boo. Wah. Naruto stumbled out of bed, fell to the ground, and bumped his head, while Tora yowled. He heard someone laughing at him and got up to see who it was, and was surprised to see, Anko-chan. Rise and shine whiskers, the girls told me you were back which wasn't too difficult since I also saw Kakashi, Guy, and Zabuza around just today so I figured I'd drop by and see you, said said person with a cheeky grin. Tora looked annoyed at Anko for the rude awakening as Naruto sat on the side of the head rubbing the bruise on his head. Thanks Anko-chan, I was planning on seeing you when I passed through the village later on. Where's Kuranai-sensei? She's on a date, 
which she constantly denies, Anko joked, and Naruto chuckled as he realized what she was talking about. I see. Asunere, Naruto remarked amusingly. Yes, and I'm curious what she'll do once I tell her you said that. Eh? Oi, you tricked me. Naruto cried out, terrified of what his second sensei might do to him. Did I? Then what would it take to keep me quiet? Anko pondered. Naruto breathed deeply for a few moments before a light bulb went off in his head and he smirked. Naruto blurred before Anko and pressed his lips against hers for a deep, she was taken aback but eventually responded in kind before he pulled away, much to her disappointment. You get that and some money to burn for some dango, deal? Winked Naruto, who was taken aback when Anko kissed him again before responding with a smirk. Two of those and the money, and we're done. Don't keep me waiting too long, Naruto-kun. My lips are a little loose, the snake mistress walked out of the room, her hips swaying, hypnotizing the blonde ninja. You two had a lot of fun, Kurama joked. Bet you wanted to join in too, Naruto joked, causing the vixen to look away and pout, causing him to chuckle a little. He changed his clothes and had a shadow clone write up the report for him to pick up later before leaving the house with Tora snug in his hood and a destination in mind. Naruto walked through the streets and took a few short routes before coming to a halt in front of a store with a large sigh written Higarashi's armory. He walked inside to find Tenten sitting behind a counter with a bored expression on her face, but she perked up when she saw the blonde enter the shop. Hey Naruto, where have you been? Tenten inquired. I was on a mission and returned today. I came by to check on you, Naruto explained. It's been boring for me because Guy sensei has been away on a mission as well, Neji has been training with Hanada at the Hyuga compound, and Lee is preparing for the surgery in a couple of days. I see. Anyway, there's something I'll need your help with building, Naruto reached into his ninja pouch and pulled out a scroll. I got an idea from a mission some time ago and I feel that it will help out a lot, Naruto explained. Let's have a look see then. Tenten took the scroll and unrolled it to reveal a blueprint of an equipment, from what she could see is that it is wrist mounted with certain mechanics applied along with Fuenjutsu, she became even more interested after reading the specs, this is an interesting piece of equipment Naruto-kun, Tenten said. Yup, if used correctly, this could be a very useful tool on the field, and this is just the prototype, Naruto said. I'll see what my father and I can do about it when we have time for this project, she says. Thanks Tenten Chan, I'll see you later then, Naruto said goodbye before leaving the shop and is now considering where he should go next. Hum. Maybe I should just walk around a bit to see if I run into any familiar faces, he says. Aside from training, it sounds like the least you could do for now, Kurama said. Naruto shrugged and began his stroll through the village, looking for any new changes and, hopefully, a little ramen run over at Ichiraku's while he was at it. He was walking through the market district when he heard someone calling out to him. He turned to see who it was, and it turned out to be Choji and Shikamaru approaching the blonde ninja. Hey Naruto, long time no see. Choji exclaimed cheerfully. Hey man, Shikamaru said, waving his hand lazily. Hey guys, it's been a while, as you said, what's been going on? Naruto inquired. Nothing new, just the same old drill, no matter how much a drag it is, Shikamaru shrugged. Geez Shika, everything is a drag for you man. I wonder whatever gets you hyped up, Naruto smirked at the slacker Nara. Please Naruto, I get enough of that from my mother, Shikamaru rubbed the back of his neck. How his father got married in the first place is an anomaly in and of itself, Kurama said, and Naruto had to reluctantly agree with her. So, what's been going on with you? Choji inquired. Nothing special. I just returned from a mission and am taking a stroll through the village to catch up with the others. How about you two? We're on our way to meet with Asuma-sensei for some training, 
and she's threatened to sick Eno on us if we don't show up. She's definitely changed since the Chunin exams, Shikamaru explained. She doesn't even diet anymore, Choji said. I have a feeling Anko-chan has something to do with it, Naruto speculated. She certainly seems the most likely, given how persuasive she can be, Kurama remarked amusingly. True that, Naruto chuckled inwardly, remembering what had happened earlier. Well, I shouldn't keep you two waiting. I catch you guys later, Naruto said. Yeah, see ya, Shikamaru said as he and Choji left for the rendezvous, leaving Naruto behind. Well, back to what I was doing before, Naruto took a few steps forward before stopping for a moment with a small frown on his face before continuing his walk. In a dimly lit room with only one candle, we find Kabuto standing before a bed on which Orochimaru was sleeping his body still recovering from the attacks by Tsunade and Naruto from his last encounter with them, while his arms are rotting and emitting a putrid stench. Did you really have to send all four of them, Orochimaru-sama? Kabuto inquired. I didn't have the heart to refuse them. They all wanted to meet this Sasuke-kun I spoke so highly of, and they wanted to test his strength, Orochimaru explained. It seems unfair. He's no match for the four of them at his current level, says one. Coo 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 coo, and that's why he'd come to me seeking power, just like I said he'd do, Orochimaru laughed. And when I gain the perfect body, killing the spawn of the Yandaimi will be the first thing I'll do, and then I'll use that bracelet of his for my conquest. There are four black silhouettes leaping through the trees at high speed somewhere deep in the forest, and their chosen destination happens to be Konoha with a specific goal in mind. Meanwhile, Naruto had long since left the market district, having eaten a few snacks along the way while Toro was being fed. They arrived at the training grounds near the lake, where Naruto stood for a moment to take in the scenery before suddenly speaking out loudly for some reason. You can come out now, I know you've been following me since I entered the market district, Naruto said, as he heard footsteps and turned to see someone walk out from behind a tree, revealing it to be Sasuke, who was staring at him intently. So you knew I was following you, Sasuke explained. Kinda hard to miss that duck butt hairstyle of yours from the rooftops, and since you didn't call out to me the entire time, I had a hunch you wanted to talk to me privately, Naruto explained. HN, simply scoffed Sasuke. Ignoring that, what do you want to talk to me about, and why the glare? Naruto asked, his arms crossed. How? muttered Sasuke. Huh? said Naruto, quirking his brow. How did you get so strong? You weren't like that back at the academy all those years, you were the dead last of the class, Sasuke demanded. Who the hell does he think he is to talk to Naruto-kun like that? fumed Karama. Indeed, it is most disrespectful of him, Chinami frowned. Please calm down you two, there's no need to be angry. Let's just figure out what his problem is, Naruto said to Tora, who was visibly upset, before responding to Sasuke, the best answer would be that I trained hard just like everyone else, it also helps that I have good proficiency in certain aspects of the ninja arts. That doesn't explain anything. I worked just as hard as you did, and yet you became a chunin while I didn't. Dude, two main reasons would be that I fooled around more than I should have been training, and the second reason would be that my education was sabotaged, otherwise I should have graduated on my first year instead, Naruto explained. And yet you were able to defeat people I couldn't, even my brother ignored me for you. Said Sasuke, still unsatisfied with the explanation. Last I checked, Sasuke, Itachi is an S-ranked missing ninja, along with Kisame, who was a member of one of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist. There was no way I could beat them. I had to buy time for Pervy Sage to show up to provide backup, and they hadn't gone all out either. Stop lying to me. I bet it's because of the bracelet that you're that powerful, Sasuke said as he approached Naruto by the collar of his vest. Will you cut that out? Why are you in such a hurry to get more powerful? Said Naruto, 
pulling Sasuke's grip off his clothes. Killing my brother is my life's work. I can't afford to waste time fooling around. Retorted Uchiha. Are you thinking clearly? Your brother was one of the most prodigious shinobi Konoha ever had and also took part in one of the great ninja wars. You can't beat him as you are now, he was able to defeat Kakashi Sensei because of the mass experience he acquired over the years. I don't need to tell you this because you know that fact better than anyone else. Sasuke clenched his teeth as memories of that night flashed through his mind, and then he heard Naruto call out to him. And if you do kill your brother, what happens next? Asked Naruto. Sasuke opened his mouth to respond, but no words came out. As I suspected, you didn't have a secondary goal other than vengeance, said Naruto. And how would you know? You have no idea what I went through that night or what I witnessed him do. And you think rushing at him with a Chidori would mean an easy killing? Neither of us are ready to face someone of your brother's caliber, which is one of the many reasons why we train, so we can be ready and strong enough to face such opponents. Besides, you could have been promoted to Chunin if it hadn't been for Orochimaru messing things up back then. There are other senseis whom you could request training from aside from Kakashi sensei. You mean those chores that civilians could have done? Sasuke retorted, though not as angrily as before. Aside from those D-ranks, you also took on higher ranked missions than those and learned about a lot of things, right, like the wave mission or the one at the Land of Snow, Spring. Naruto chuckled. And besides. I can always be your sparring partner and help you get stronger. Without a doubt, Itachi will show up again and next time he won't shrug you off, he thought. Sasuke was now deep in thought. He had intended to learn about the blonde's methods of gaining strength in the shortest amount of time so that he could use them for himself, but now he was hearing something else. However, Sasuke couldn't deny what Naruto was saying. There are strong shinobi in the village other than Kakashi from whom he could seek training, and there are no rules prohibiting it with the exception of clans. There's also the fact that a former hidden mist swordsman now lives in Konoha, so he could learn more about the one who appears to be accompanying his brother just in case. I hate to admit it, but he's right. I should be able to gain the power I need from training with them. Guess I won't be wasting my time like I thought, Sasuke reasoned. So, Sasuke, what do you think? I know you're a proud guy, but asking for help doesn't make you look weak. It shows that you're willing to broaden your horizons, and don't forget to think about what you'll do after you achieve your main goal. HN. Snorted Sasuke in response. I despise that kind of attitude, as if he knows everything, Kurama grumbled. When Naruto heard Sasuke call out to him again, he simply shook his head and turned to leave. What is it, Sasuke? He asked. I'd like to challenge you to a spar right now. I need to know how strong you are in comparison to me, Sasuke said. Naruto paused for a few moments before smirking, challenge accepted, I've been wanting to fight you since our academy days. Then he took a fighting stance as Tora jumped out of the hood and went to sit beneath the shade of a tree to watch. Both stared at each other intently before suddenly lunging at the same time to begin the spar. Naruto and Sasuke were rapidly exchanging punches and kicks with both sides either defending or attempting to counterattack. Naruto backpedaled whilst parrying the barrage of punches launched by Sasuke then he quickly found an opening and took step forward to parry a left punch with a left open palm then retaliated by slamming a palm thrust into Sasuke's chest, knocking the Uchiha back then followed it up with a flying kick. Sasuke recovered in time to duck beneath the incoming attack and strike out at his back with a jumping roundhouse kick, but Naruto sensed his approach and performed a front flip with a leg out to deflect the kick. He spun around to engage Sasuke in the praying mantis style, and he was always capable of locking his opponent's attacks before striking with his own. TCH, the Dobie's tough, but I'm not through yet. Sasuke flung a handful of shuriken at the blonde, 
quickly weaving through a set of hand signs, fire style, phoenix flower jutsu. He took a deep breath before spewing a volley of fireballs. When Naruto saw Sasuke weaving through a set of hand signs, he dashed backwards while throwing a handful of his own shuriken to deflect the incoming projectiles. Water style. Raging waves. He opened his mouth and spewed a large volume of water in the form of a wave which rushed towards Sasuke while extinguishing the fireballs along the way. Sasuke jumped out of the way of the jutsu, landing sideways on the trunk, then kicked off towards Naruto with a kanai in hand, ready to slash at him, but the blonde switched to defense by using the metal plate on the back of his gloves. Naruto grabbed Sasuke's wrist and yanked him over his shoulder, shouting, Shadow Kick. As he sped forward with a sidekick, leaving green afterimages behind him, but Sasuke flipped out of the way before retaking, revealing that he had activated his eyes. When Naruto saw the active dojutsu, he frowned slightly and dashed towards Sasuke in a zigzag pattern with twice the speed before lashing out with a roundhouse kick that was evaded and quickly blocked a knee strike then used the momentum from the impact to hop backwards before charging back in. Sasuke continued to parry the strikes and attempt to strike back, with Naruto blocking and countering with his own while steadily and rapidly increasing his attack speed and shuffling between fighting styles to throw him off his rhythm. Naruto launched a low sweep kick with Sasuke jumping into the air and landing with a heel drop kick, but he formed his signature hand sign and created a shadow clone to intercept the attack by catching the leg, he swiftly maneuvered around Sasuke and launched an uppercut to send him high into the air, Sasuke recovered in mid-air and weaved through a set of hand signs and took in a deep breath, water style, water sword. Naruto conjured water to his left hand and manipulated it to take on the form of a zanbato before swinging the blade to split the fireball cleanly in half before throwing it at Sasuke, who somersaulted in the air to evade it before landing on the ground. My turn, wind style, gale wolf. Naruto gathered wind in his hands before thrusting forward to launch a wind construct of a howling wolf towards Sasuke. The Uchiha leapt backwards while flinging kanai at the wolf, but the projectiles bounced off upon contact and the wolf continued its charge before tackling its target, causing a small condensed tornado to blow him away with great force. Naruto quickly teleported behind Sasuke and delivered a double palm thrust that knocked him to the ground. Sasuke suddenly puffed out smoke to reveal a wooden log, alerting Naruto to an impending attack. Sasuke then appeared in front of him in a crouching position and lashed out with a kick, causing Naruto to cross his arms to reduce the damage and be launched into the air. It's over with, Lion's Barrage. He exclaimed as he saw Sasuke vanish from the ground. Don't be so sure, wind style, gale surge. Naruto channeled wind chakra throughout his body before expelling it in a radial burst of air to knock his opponent back before spinning round to counter, dive kicks. He proceeded to land diving kicks on them continuously with Sasuke blocking as best he could until both landed back on the ground and jumped away from the other. Sasuke was about to charge in again when he noticed Naruto raise his hand and say, that's enough, Sasuke, this spar is over. What do you mean? I can still keep going, Sasuke insisted, determined to continue the fight. I know, but remember why we were sparring which was to determine the level of power between you and me," Naruto explained. So far, I've noticed a few things that you need to work on. And what are they? Said Sasuke, crossing his arms. First, work on your speed. Your Sharingan relies on your speed for both action and reaction. Get yourself a couple of weights. Remember, Lee did the same thing before and look how strong he became. Also, train with your Sharingan less so that your body can learn to adapt instinctively and use less chakra, which sharpens your use of the dojutsu in combat. Remember, Kakashi Ni uses that method as well. The Uchiha saw logic in what he said, recalling what Kiba had told him about the battle between Rock Lee and Gaia during the preliminary rounds, not to mention the previous spar with the former. He also noticed that Kakashi rarely used his Sharingan unless he was performing his signature ninjutsu or faced a particularly formidable opponent. 
And I think you should try Kenjutsu as well, Naruto added. What makes you say that? Piqued Sasuke's interest. When I was deflecting your kanai strikes, I noticed that you were attacking as if you were wielding a blade. You might have a talent in it. Zabuza could confirm it if you ask him. Naruto felt something plop into his hood and looked to see Tora Mew at him. He looked to the sky and saw that the sun had already set, it's getting late, we should head on home. You've given me plenty to think about, Sasuke said. An understatement of the year, scoffed Kurama. Sure I did, but at least you've found ways to get stronger, Naruto smirked, and be sure to carefully consider what to do next after all this and not do anything you might regret for the rest of your life. See ya later Sasuke, I might have another spar with you later, the blonde took off through the trees in the direction of the compound. Sometime later, Sasuke was also on his way home with a lot on his mind. So many roots and it took Adobe to point it out to me. At least I know I'll be able to gain the strength needed to avenge my clan. But what do I do after killing Itachi? He landed on a tree and was about to move on when something or rather someone landed in the middle of the path to obstruct him, he took. Alright then, who are you for and what are you doing here? Sasuke asked, his guard up for a fight. I'm Kitamaru of the East Gate, said the dark-skinned shinobi with the ponytail and six arms on his body. And I am Sakin of the West Gate, the fair-skinned shinobi with light blue-gray hair and a second head protruding from his upper back said. I am Jirobo of the South Gate, said the tallest member of the group, who has a mohawk-style haircut. And I am Tuyuya of the North Gate, said the group's only female redhead. Don't make me repeat myself. What do you expect from me? Sasuke inquired. You should consider yourself lucky, you've been invited to join Orochimaru and we're giving you the VIP treatment, Kitamaru replied. Orochimaru, the one who placed the cursed mark on me, said Sasuke, before adding, what exactly does he want from me? It's not what he wants, but what he offers, which is power beyond imagination and what the village has been keeping you from, Sakin explained. That's right, the time has come to leave this run-down village and gain true power, Tiyuya said. As enticing as it sounds. I'll have to decline that offer, Sasuke said, much to the surprise and then rage of the Sound 4. Why do you refuse such an offer? Surely you saw Orochimaru prowess Samas when he attacked your village, Jirobo frowned. Kinda difficult to ignore, but then again it took two villages to attack one and were soundly defeated, and Kakashi told me about how Orochimaru retreated while being permanently crippled on both arms, so I don't think a cripple would make a good teacher, Sasuke said casually. What did you say, you little brat? Tiyuya demanded angrily. You heard me. This shitty, village, as you called it, offers me more power than a missing nin who was forced to flee his own village twice so he could accept his offer, which you shoved down his throat for him. Orochimaru told us that there would be no need for us to be forceful, but you proved the opposite. Personally, I was hoping to pick a fight with you. I'm going to play do re mi on those ribs of yours until they crack before bringing you back to Orochimaru-sama. Said Sakin, his face crazed. I was hoping for some playtime, and now I have it, Kitamaru said. It's time to make you sing, shithead! exclaimed Tuyuya. You should have arrived peacefully, but it's too late for you now! Jirobo exclaimed. All four of the sound nin charged toward Sasuke with the intent of harming him, while the Uchiha prepared to engage them with his Sharingan active, despite feeling stinging pain from the cursed seal but ignoring it as he moved in to attack. So that's it for today, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you, see you all in my next video.